martial law, raging honor, and uh, yeah, yeah. But it's definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely the high, high, the high uh, time of her career for sure. Including this one came during that time. Where oh yeah, she was. Uh, it was a name. I mean, they they could market her via this movie. That speaks to uh, what uh, what she had achieved at that time. I like that uh, John Mill is uh, is actually quite quite a mellow cop, just you know trying to help. He, he's got more instinct just to you know put her away, you know, nail her ass. <laughs> and uh, but Whoa. part part of uh, this interrogation, including where he looks at that wound that she has, you know, she says, oh, "I'm not into street fighting. I'm not doing that stuff," you know. And also the end of the interrogation where John or Nick DeMarco talks to his uh, colleague that uh, you know she's a good kid. That was also cut out the out of the Hong Kong version, so you you you, you lost some characterization that I actually like, uh, which is a shame. But the, the Hong Kong version, uh, as we'll talk about, they didn't really favor keeping the good stuff. Uh, and go, going back to the Hong Kong version, by the way, what it was actually again, it was called Bloody Mary Killer, dubbed entirely into Cantonese, changed the name of Don Neum's character essentially from Stingray to Devilfish, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> But it all actually stars Robin Hsu of Mortal Kombat fame in exclusive scenes to that edit, along with actually Godfrey Ho himself. He's actually in a supporting role, and it's it's about it's shorter, but it has about thirty minutes of new scenes, and therefore a lot a lot of stuff is edited out. And the main cast appears a little bit in these uh, new scenes, including Cynthia. She has a uh, rather training fight scene with uh, Robin, but uh, it, it's a it's not a good edit. It's it evokes cut and paste. Uh, the cut and paste era that Godfrey Ho was very much a part of, but not in a good way. Uh, but we'll talk extensively of uh, sort of uh, those scenes during uh, the members only extra, where you see a Bloody Mary Killer 30 minutes of it. Uh, but we'll also mention as we go along uh, some of the stuff that was cut uh, from uh, Undefeatable, the superior edit uh, of, the, of the two. But uh, yeah, you can go back a little bit to, to Cynthia Rothrock, the tail end of her sort of uh, career. What, what happened there? Yeah, um, the beginning of the new millennium saw uh, a third uh, Tiger Claws film. Um, but as career b- began to wind down, and uh, at, as of right now, her last film is uh, 2004's Sci Fighter, which also featured uh, the genre notable Don the Dragon Wilson. Um, these days she concentrates on uh, a family life, uh, public appearances and, and teaching martial arts. Although there are, you know, there are rumors of uh, you know, further film, film roles and of a, a possible autobiography as well, which is a, well, that should be, would make a good read. Because uh, in, in her career she's, you know, she's been in a lot of places, made a lot of movies, so I'm sure she's got a, you know, a lot of stories to tell. She's made a lot of legends. Yeah, yeah it would be nice to hear at some point, or read cool. at some point. So, so what do you think, uh, Tom, essentially, of... What, what, what do you think of Cynthia, essentially? What's your general thought on her? Uh, I must have first saw her in Martial Law 2, I think it was. Some straight video shit that she was on. Um, but my first proper experience with her, I think it was Millionaire's Express. She's oh, not oh, exactly... Oh, 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 by the way, Tom, I've got to mention here, the, the tail end of the, the scenes between the sisters. It actually yeah. features a lot of, like, exposition, which is always hard for... For any yeah. movie, you know, they they talk about you gotta have an education. No, I'll I'll take a job. No, you gotta have your education. It's uh, more or less Christy, Cynthia's character, that isn't uh, you know hopeful for the future. And exposition is always hard, so I don't mind it. Uh, the Hong Kong version actually maintains the essence of this scene, but cuts out some of the playful moments between the sisters. We see, as we'll see here. So that that's a good cut, you know, a minor cut. Yeah, you could definitely so, get trimmed down slightly this this scene in particular. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, going back to Cynthia when you first saw her. Yeah, I must have first saw her in uh, Millionaire's Express. She's not exactly a defining presence in that film, but you know she does all right in that. Um, Honey, I think it must have been. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> you know he uh, seems. Uh, he seems. Uh, we'll we'll go back to your impressions of Cynthia because uh, you know. Don is on. Don is on. Don is on. You know he he seems sweet enough when he enters. You know he, like a physical guy. In love with his wife, you know. It, it's not too bad. I mean, who 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 wouldn't, you know? Uh, 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 
Oh, that, oh my god, an animal. Oh, oh, holy shit! <laughs> that, that, that towel is of no use. Stingway doesn't want to get sweat on his leather, but doesn't realise his hair is all the sponge he needs. <laughs> to soak it up. <laughs> and to, to be honest, I mean, this is, you know, as with like Ben mm, in Red to Kill, you know, you can have fun with that, you know, rapist performance, kind of. But yeah. in all honesty, I think Don, as fun as the performance is, and, and Don is, I think, is the first to recognise that, uh, and the cast that was on this movie, it's actually rather fucking chilling. You know, yeah, this, it's this, not li this, this line here, come on, mommy, I want to play. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not exploitative. It's, it's, quite, it's quite, you know, vicious, isn't it? And very uncomfortable. It's definitely uncomfortable. I mean, look yeah. at the camera, it's lingering on the events uh, here, you know. And it's not, you know, you, you might think initially that it's a sexual game between the two, but now, you know, the camera stays on it. It's not at all hard. Uh, sorry, it's not easy to watch, rather. And, you know, the the acting choices, you know, that are kind of over the top or rather intense, they, they, are, they enhance, you know, the chilling nature to this. And fuck me, she's so good. You know, playing, yeah. the, playing the victim is not easy. It's not easy. And by the way, this was the second day of shooting. <laughs> you know, 13 hour day first, and then a few hours of uh, a rape scene. So, yeah, yeah, we arrived. Uh, and, you know, it's obviously not fun to shoot this stuff. I've always wondered if, uh, you know, a set is supposed to be tense during this, and they, or if they try to make it a bit more relaxed atmosphere. Uh, like in Red to Kill, as we spoke of on Commentary on Fire. You know, if that that set was tense, or if they needed the, needed it to be a bit more loose for everyone to get through the horrific stuff here. It work both ways, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you, maybe you need for you know more sort of intense scenes like this. You might need to be a bit more uh, sort of prepared and a bit more uh, a bit more chilled, maybe. Hmm. You know. This uh, aftermath here, where she's on the floor and he's having his dinner, that is uh, not in the Hong Kong version. Most of the rape is, but uh, this, which is even more horrible, to be honest. I'm sorry, Stingers, but that steak is severely undercooked. <laughs> you don't want to be eating that. Well, Stingray doesn't <laughs> cook his steaks. <laughs> he likes it raw. Yeah. But look at her, she's so good in this. I mean, th this is subtle, you know, just, yeah. she's a catatonic shell, you know, and still the tears come Yeah, it's her. a shame she's not used more, to be honest, because she, she's really good in it. And, and she's actually, you know, there's barely any mention of her leaving him in the oh. Hong Kong version. Yeah, uh, yeah. That is really unclear in the Hong Kong version. This is another scene that's not in the Hong Kong version where he gets his money from the uh, illegal fighting, uh, uh, illegal death match. So, um, you know, the, it's a shame that whoever supervised the edit of uh, Blood Mary Killer didn't realize the good stuff. Because it's, uh, I'm sorry, Robin Shu can't draw the audiences in fully. In my opinion, so. Uh, uh, he's not exactly charismatic, is he? Really. Good, good-looking guy enough, but uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I think we have time to go back to a little bit more about your history with Cynthia, Tom. Yeah, I was saying I think she, she's okay in Millionaire's Express, but I think the film that really she stood out with was Right and Wrongs, oh, okay. where um, yeah, she even though she did a lot, of, you know, Yumbo did a lot of the uh, stunts for her. Oh really? Uh, Could you spot that doubling? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can spot it from a mile away. But yeah, she's she's good in it, and uh, also um, uh, police assassins, aka uh, Inspector Skirts. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. I, I think, think it's yes, madam. Yeah. yeah, yes, madam. Yeah, um, she's really good in that as well. You know, yeah, she gets the a chance to really throw some throw around in that. So. Yeah, they're a, a best film. I mean, it's uh, unbelievable, really. To, uh, knowing like Western actors in Hong Kong cinema, Cynthia got the respect to the extent that she was able to co-star in movies, properly co-star, and even mm. star eventually in Blonde Fury. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's really admirable. It speaks to her, you know, dedication and strength that she could break through. She could gain the respect of action, stern and you know hard-ass action directors because I'm not. I don't think it's easy to work for Samo. I mean, uh, he requires a high standard. He requires you to take hits and all of that. And I'm sure Cynthia, when she was eventually treated as one of the guys, you know, she she, she still had to take the hits, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. You know what I mean? But uh, Corey used her very well in uh, Writing Wrong. So, you know, that, yeah. part of that you know, dark and nasty movie. Uh, and she, you know, spoiler, spoilers, she uh, dies a nasty death in that movie. Uh, depending on the version you watch. <laughs> so... You know, it's spoilers in a way, 
but uh, not. There's two versions of that movie as well. Yeah, yep. some some of uh, 